Adam Savage here in my cave with the culmination of <clears throat> a tremendous amount of work. Whew. Okay, regular viewers of this channel are gonna be familiar with the fact that there is no such thing as a one day build that happens in a day. Occasionally such things occur, but it's infrequent. Um, and this is a particular example, because I've done one day builds like the uh, Hellboy Mechahan in which I dipped in several times over a period of years. But uh, this right in front of me, these 140 some odd pieces comprise, when I am finished assembling them, Hellboy's Sidearm, the Samaritan from the Guillermo del Toro Hellboy films. Uh, I embarked upon this a few months ago and the whole story of my lockdown, the COVID lockdown that I've dealt with here in the cave has been a story about <clears throat> dialing up my precision as a maker. And this here is sort of the, the pinnacle of that right now. Um, I handmade every single piece of this and handmade. Like every screw is not only turned to specific length, but often given a slightly shallower cut and shaped. This is what someone told me every gunsmith does. Every screw in a gun is really specific. And here we are, all of the pieces together for the final time, for the final assembly. What is different between now and the previous assembly video we did? The difference is that I had the aluminum parts of the gun chemically blackened. I debated anodizing them black, but actually the black coating of anodization, which is a coating of aluminum oxide, is super robust, way more robust than I actually wanted for my Samaritan. Um, and this is a departure from the original gun, which is painted. Here is the original gun built by Dominic Taylor uh, at a Weta workshop back in the early aughts and it's been painted in a matte black paint and then weathered with hammers and sandpaper and stuff like that. When I finished this gun, I realized I didn't want to just paint it. I wanted, as I'm learning more and more that I want from the creations that I make, I want a specific experience in addition to an aesthetic experience. So seeing the, the pistol in front of me, is an aesthetic experience, but holding it is an experience experience. It's a, it, it's a physical experience. And I painted a lot of movie guns in my time with matte black spray paint, and I've buffed it up to a high shine and weathered it. And I think that is a fantastic finish. I love that finish. I'm very attached to it. And I, I've done lots of good things with it. But in this case, I wanted something even finer. I wanted something that felt, there's just, there's a temperature difference between a paint finish and a chemical finish. I, I can feel the cool metal of the, of the pieces. And it's cool, metal. Okay, <clears throat> have I covered all the bases? Yes, I've got the laser, I've got the mechanics, I've got the silver plated parts the parts I'm leaving brass. Yeah, I don't think there's anything to do now, but begin and embark upon the final assembly. <laughs> I keep on wondering if there's something I'm forgetting, but I really don't think there is. I've taken some pictures of this arrangement and I have Oh man, it's some of the more precise knolling I have ever done. Stay, 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 my big fat fingers. Mm. This thing is gonna be exciting. I'm um, just, you know, I'm slowing this down a little bit because I'm super excited. Okay. Let's begin, shall we? Okay. Uh, so uh, I, some of these pieces, the chemical blackening process that I, uh, a friend of mine did it for me. Um, and it involves a, uh, an acid etch cleaner, uh, blackening agent, and then a, uh, a, a, an oil type of sealer. Um, 
I'll include links to the company that makes the chemicals for this and below. Uh, it's not for home shop use, um, but I like the finish. And it's, it's a delicate finish. It's a little bit delicate, which I actually like. I think that's gonna work in favor of this gun weathering well. Um, but that oil finish means that some of these things are actually oily. Uh, and so I'm just gonna, you know, as I put this together, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a final polish and, you know, buffing and, oh God, this is gonna be so cool. I've got my reference. This is the original Samaritan. Two were made for the movie. Uh, one of them is owned by Guillermo. He may own both of them, I'm actually not sure, but I have held this gun. This is the one in Guillermo's exhibit of his Cabinets of Curiosities. And uh, years ago when Guillermo and I first met, I went to his house and he let me hold this. Uh, and so this is my paint reference. This is gonna be my weathering reference. And as you can see here, there are some pictures in here. There are some real dings, like a mm, hammer dings. And I plan to actually add those, uh, but not immediately, just as we go. And um, so I'm gonna start with the hard part, which is this back, right? Okay, so this is definitely the more complicated part I'm gonna put in the switch. And this is the switch for the laser. <laughs> All right, uh, we got tweezers, we got our little hammer, we have a punch, flatheads, 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 Phillipses, Phillipses, Hobbitses. Uh, and I may be doing most of this with my glasses off because, oh God, is that one too small? Oh, that's the size. Oh, oh, there you are. There you went. Now, wait a second. I think, yeah. I was wondering where you were. This is this is the screw from the switch that I was missing. Um, and I had replaced it with something else. Um, is this a 080? Let's see here. Uh, right, how long is this? This is about eight millimeters long. Nope. Okay, right, because I got it wrong. I need tiny screws. <clears throat> oh, I live in terror of this thing falling over on me. Um, I think it's these, these buttons. Let's see. Great. In. In like Glenn. Now I think we could... Put in the trigger guard. Now the finish is coming off the trigger guard a bit, but I don't really mind that. I think that actually looks kind of cool. We've got the front trigger here. Right, that goes between the wires, yes. And that grabs this here. This is, yeah, this is the complicated piece. Bingo. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I forgot the hammer's gotta go in there with that piece because it can't go separately. There are so many orders of operations to remember in the assembling of a gun prop like this. There we go, that's it.
All right. Awesome. All right. So uh, that being in, and that's where the spring goes. I think I worry about that later. Uh, now I put in these guys. Now the trigger. And the trigger pin. Awesome. Trigger pins in. Great. Oh, right. I have to put in the other side of the trigger grabber. Trigger grabber. <clears throat> my hammer in this gun is only captured on one side because of because I built this gun wrong. Um, and so as such, I need to uh... oh wow, is that actually great. Uh, now I need to put in the cheater. A fake attachment screw. Come on. Come on, catch that thread. Catch that pigeon. Wow. There we go. Let's use the gentle. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. That's what it is. It's the other side. Oh, so pretty. I'm really like, I'm just really grooving on how much this looks like a real firearm with this gray black seal. It's like seal skin. Great. All right, let's put in this uh, base part. Oh, right, All right. We want to put in the spring. Swing that around here. And then, yep. This is an internal screw, so I did not color it. I took every screw that you can see, I actually blued. I heated it up until it turned blue. This is so satisfying. After all of this work, after all of this, after all of it, it's really lovely to be doing this for. I mean, I'll take this gun apart another 20 or 30 times in my life. I'm sure of it. But at the same time. Oh. All right. But at the same time, this is like a milestone. A milestone, I say. Oh, you're routed in the wrong direction. That's the problem. No, oh, okay, so I gotta remove all those. Okay. Unroute, reroute. There you go. Oh, everything fits much easier when you go where you're supposed to. There's like, 
There's the things that you built that went as you intended, and then there's the things that you built that didn't go as you intended, and you have to remember how you modified in order to get it working. There we go, good. That's routing where it should. And that means that if I put this in here, and yes, now if I draw this, it cocks and the trigger pulls. Yes, okay. So I think now I can start to put on the other pieces. To attach my magnet for the clicky click, I need a 1 8 inch wide piece of masking tape. There we are. There's my 1 inch wide piece of masking tape. I'm going to put that on this magnet. And that magnet's going to go here. And then that's going to go there. And then these are the two shorties that live there. Okay, am I forgetting anything here? No. Now I want to put in this guy. These little tiny stainless 172 flatheads that I found. Great. Oh, it's looking so pretty. I kind of want to blue this one, but I might just leave it for now. Okay, so uh, it's still cocks. It releases. Good. Uh, that means I could now probably put in this guy. It gives me a slightly better thing to hold on to. Hmm. I've got a little bit of um, eggshell on my paint here, and I'm just going to take the eggshell off this clear coat with a little bit of quadruple zero steel wool. This is about the gentlest, the gentlest thing you could use is four zero steel wool. I mean, it can still move a lot of meat, so you still want to be careful with it, but yeah, all right. That one goes there, that one goes there. I'm gonna leave the tail fin out for right now. I mean the uh, center tent, center bottom lanyard. I'm gonna leave it out so I can still stand this thing up. Okay, so now it's time to start working on uh, that guy. I mean the, um, the cylinder release. The spring goes there, and then wonderful. And then this guy pin that goes in here like that. Okay. Um, is that all the bottom? That is, that's all the bottom back end. Excellent. Terrific. So there's that. And now you're from something else. Now we go towards the front end. I'm going to do all the detailing on the front end and work towards the middle. So first and foremost, this business, these guys, Great. Now, I'm going to put the front sight on. Oh, so pretty. Look at that. Good. close-ups of this are just going to be so pretty. 
Uh, how does this work? Okay, these guys come in here. Yeah, I can do those three right now. This was one of the most difficult parts of this build, this little top section. And truth be told, it really kicked my butt. But I learned a lot. Here's the thing about this mechanical stuff is that every time it didn't work, I had to take it apart and figure out why. And every time you do that, it's like juggling. You're just burning another iteration of some institutional knowledge and how to solve a problem. Iterate, iterate, iterate. It's just, um, I'm just gonna let these concentric, yep, these countersunks to uh, seat themselves the way they want. And then there are these tiny little doohickeys. And there's four of them. These are zero, or these are 172 set screws. Holy cow, they are tiny. One of these is more natural there, and the other is more natural there. Let's see if I got it right. The 50 chance. 50-50 chance of getting it right, and I always get it wrong. One seventy-two set screw holds that detail in. I think these were glued on the real one, but I did all mechanical connections for mine. All right, so rear sight. Putting in the rear sight. Also following the axiom, axiom, only tighten down all the screws. Don't tighten down any screw until they're all in. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Awesome. Um, I have to take care of a little bit of a When I tumbled these parts, I did a final polish tumble in walnut, in walnut shells, and it actually led to some difficulties. Okay, uh, so this guy, comes in there. Those get covered, so. They are un, oh, there we go. What am I forgetting? Okay, I'm forgetting a few things. One is this. That's my signature. I do want to put a serial number on this, but I'm not sure where. That lives there like that. And the wires go through here. And then they come through here. Now I put this in. This is just to make sure I have a little bit of side to side ability to move this center pin pivot. And just making sure I have it right. And here is where I'm really appreciating my gun screwdrivers, which allow me to screw these all in and make them nice and tight without harming the screws without damaging them. Oh, hey, don't do that. Hey, okay. Dude, 
Dude, this is already feeling so much like a like the real thing. There is no real thing, but it feels like the real thing. Okay. Uh, so now I want to do the front barrel and laser arrangement. All oh, right, I need to add a tiny piece of tape to that. And I have a tiny piece of tape. That's it, right? Just that. Now that was enough. Oh, almost. No, not quite. This is the laser sight. This will actually come on when you push the trigger. You know, I would love a smaller wire lug, even than the smallest one that I use. I just love wire nuts. I like how, um, I like that it's a mechanical wiring solution that I can undo and redo. That makes a big difference to me. So I'm gonna put this in here and wait, we still wanna get this all the way down. Right, and yep, great, still aiming and moving. So I'm gonna sock the wire nuts in there. Great. And then this guy, this guy. Now, uh, the right side was the longer side. Am I right about that? I think so. Look, if I can't get it in this side, then it's the left side that was the longer side. This is the right side, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let's just see if this goes all the way down. These were very scary holes to drill. These holes that had to be perfectly perpendicular to the length of the barrel and yet drilled into the side. So now we're gonna put in the barrel. We're gonna put in the barrel pin. Oh! Rat. Well, I'm about to beat this thing up with a hammer, so I can't be too upset about that. Uh, so let's get some machine oil on the pin here. Great. And we'll get the Teflon, my little Teflon hemisphere at the bottom. We'll get a little bit of yeah, machine oil in there. I will do that, and here comes the pin. Whew. This looks so good. Oh my gosh. Goodness gracious, this looks amazing. Um, way, way, way better than I was thinking it might. Uh, okay, so now we've got a few more little doohickeys to put. Oh, I totally screwed up. Okay, so I need to pull the barrel out again. Yeah, I need to pull the barrel out, the cylinder, excuse me. Okay, because these little guys have to be tightened in, and those are using the smallest of my set screws. Wonderful. Marvelous. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, Loctite to the barrel pin because it tends to come undone. That should keep it from unwinding itself. Okay, now, some little aesthetic screws. Oh my God, it looks so good. It's so much better than a paint job. Holy hell. Yeah, well, that definitely wanted to go there. And this one wants to be a shorty, I think. Right, every screw is customized to the place it lives. Yep, there you go. It's a nice shorty. All 
I turn these into slotted set screws with a, I think a saw. There we go. Almost, almost, almost. Right, we gotta put this guy in. You know, the thing is, is when you do this chemical one and some of the screws are blued, you end up with all these really subtly different textures. And the, the, the subtle degree to which they're different is actually really neat. Um, and feels like a hell of a lot of veracity. All right, now that that's in, I can tighten these guys down. This one too. Great, ladies and germs. Oh man. So I'm gonna put the tools away. These are all the tools that go with this. Yep. Okay. And the two screwdrivers. Here, here. Let's go there hammer and the tweezers. Here is the finish in all of its glory. You can really, I tell you, it like, that's a piece of blued steel and this is chemically black and aluminum. I can't tell the difference between the two. It feels amazing. It feels silky smooth. I love my silver plated bronze hammer. Oh my gosh, look at that. I don't know if this will make it clear or not. Let's take a look here. I adjusted the lighting so the reflection really shows off how beautiful these parts and pieces are. So happy with how this looks. Okay, I have some hammers. I have some steel wool and I have some oily rags. This should help me do the weathering that I wanna do. The oily rags are already kind of enough to start to pull this finish off the high spots, but I wanna do, let's, um. There's a lot of marks on this thing. There's a lot of marks. There's there's like lots of lots of little tiny dings all over the place. And they're all of different sizes and shapes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, there's tons of dings all over the actual cylinder. This is the weathering of a million tiny bumps on stuff. I'm 
just hitting every edge and making sure it shows a little bit of wear and tear without over focusing too much on any single edge. Look, I'm an artist and I spend my life chasing down certain kinds of aesthetic experience. I'm also an engineer and I spend my life trying to engineer those aesthetic experiences to have a veracity that suits me. And in all honesty, this piece represents the pinnacle of both my artistic and engineering sensibilities for me. The experience I have of holding onto this firearm actually exceeds what I was hoping when I embarked upon this project. Um, to begin with, there was the tipping point of realizing that I might just have the machining skills to be able to pull it off. And I started slowly. I just made the cylinder one Sunday when I had a little extra time and I just thought, just do the cylinder, we'll see how that goes. And that went well enough that I continued on. Did the front part of the barrel. I did the back part. I waited to sculpt the wood until it was almost over. I called in some help. I called my friends from Weta who built this gun and they gave me some great advice. I called my friend Victor Broadley who not only etched these bullets so beautifully, but decided to show off what a master machinist could do and delivered these liquid filled silver maple anti semi bullets that are, uh, I, Mm, chef's kiss. Ah, the happy accident of the magnet giving me this. The electrical system so that I actually have a laser coming out of this. Yeah, and by the way, the laser lines up really nicely with the sight picture. That was unintentional, but it is a mark of how accurate my machining was, I think. Scratch building the hammer. I have never tried that before, nor had I tried silver plate. There are so many milestones in this, but for me, the biggest one is the final finish. Um, I am very adept at paint finishes. I had never tried a chemical acid bath for blackening aluminum and the other metals that this is part of. And it looks so much like steel, it fools me from here. It, it looks, it, it, it is every bit what I was hoping. Also these little hammer dings. This was so much fun to go around the completed gun and start whacking it with bits of metal and hammers to make it look like it had authentically been strapped to Hellboy's side for decades. Look, ever since I saw this movie in 2004, I've been obsessed with this firearm. So you can consider this the culmination of 17 years of fascination. I really appreciate you guys joining me on this build. It has been educational. It has been exhausting. It has concerned me and thrilled me in equal measure. And in the final analysis, I'm the better for it. This bumped up all sorts of aspects of my skill base. And I thank you for joining me for it. <sighs> all right, see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching that entire video. If you would like to support Tested even further, well, I'm here to tell you that you could become a member. If you follow the links below, you will see there are several tiers of membership depending on how much you'd like to pay and how much access you would like to me and the Tested team. And membership comes, as always, with some excellent benefits, including uh, questions that I'll answer in live streams. The questions have been so amazing and exclusive videos and exclusive content. Follow the links below and we will see you next time.